was watching Kyrie Irving hit that shot, I, I think the only adjective, the only descriptor I had in that moment was like, ah! Do you yeah. do something better? They said it's a hook shot. He threw that thing. I, what are you talking about hook? <laughs> he threw it in with his left hand. Well, for keeping with the theme, I think madness is also a, an appropriate way to describe yeah. what we saw. If you missed it, this is exactly what we are talking about. The defending champs in town visiting the Dallas Mavericks. Patrick Mahomes, his wife, Brittany Mahomes, also in attendance. So we're going to pick this one up seven minutes left in the game. The Mavs up 11. Jamal Murray drives but gets it blocked there by Derek Lively. Mavs coming the other way. Luka Doncic. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that perk. No, not, well, not once he gets you on your on his hip. He's getting right down to the basket. He's so crafty. Well, notice he was staring at his left hand, too. Second that was ominous. in the building. Right. That was ominous for something to come. But really, Nikola Jokic, when he gets a full head of steam, there isn't much you can do about that. Oh, that's this is the guy you want to have the ball in your hands. Tie game. Jamal Murray pulls up. He says, you know what? I am a cold, cold man. Here, though, Dallas down three. Thanks. Out of the timeout. Huge oh. shot here from Luka Doncic. Big shot, man. That's what he does. Mark Cuban in his uh, his St. Patrick's Day green is loving it. Once again, this is the guy you want to take early, the shot. Couldn't early. quite get it to go. How many times have we seen him make that shot, though, Austin? I have, I, I don't mind the shot. I just mind when he took it. Because well, left room for this. And then there was... Well, what about this one? Oh. <laughs> the level of difficulty. What's Jokic supposed to do? Jokic plays this perfectly. He's on his right side. He defends the shot. He changes Chases him up to the top of the key. I mean, Luca didn't even know what to say. No, Luca. Luca was stunned because usually he's the guy who's needing to take the shot in the final seconds. He said, "Wait a second. There's another person who can hit it with the left like that. No freaking way." We mentioned Patrick Mahomes is in the building. Here's him with Kyrie Irving after the game. Greatness, dog. Greatness. Yes, sir. I felt good. Uh, it's a play that we work on uh, during shoot around pretty often. So. Um, being lucky enough and fortunate enough to hit a left-hand floater outside the uh, free throw line. I thought I got a little closer in the paint, but when I looked at it after the game and I was uh, pretty far out. But, um, you know, shots that I work on and uh, just being ambidextrous and being able to trust the, the skills that I work on when no one's watching and, you know, fortunate enough to win in tonight. I mean... Look at this, and this isn't even quite to scale because we know that Kyrie Irving was about 20 feet from the basket. That's, yeah. you know, the magic of television oh, here. But it. it was really the magic of Kyrie Irving. Can you just describe how difficult, how insane this shot was? I don't know what's more impressive, the fact that he's able to make this shot right. or the fact that he chose to take this for game. It's, it just shows you the, the level of confidence that he has mm -hmm. in his left hand, his offhand. I mean, look at this right here. We're seeing a guy being contested by a seven-footer, 6'8 guy behind him, doesn't know where that's happening, MVP. going away from his left, and it's not even a straight floater. As you can see, he kind of has like a sign wind. Mm -hmm. like he almost like tossed the ball in right. from past the free throw line. An incredible shot. This guy's skill level is not talked about it enough. I got to see it firsthand a little bit. Uh, lockout year was his rookie right. year. I was at Duke coming in as a freshman. He stayed on campus. So we played a one-on-one, -on -one, time after time, day after day. I would play perfect defense on this guy, Malika. And he would hit me with some crazy left-hand hook, stopping on a dime, can finish you know, either hand. Mm -hmm. He really is one of the best finishers to ever play the game of basketball. And Absolutely. every time we see moments like last night, we're reminded why he's so special. I, I have no doubt that you were playing perfect defense. I was trying. Say? I iron sharpens iron. You're not the only one, though, who noticed yep. this shot last night. Around the NBA, folks were reacting. You have LeBron James, who knows something about Kyrie Irving making absolutely insane shots. He said, that is freaking insane, Kyrie. You are sick. And then, of course, Damian Lillard, he chimed in on social media as well. Jalen Brunson, he added that Kyrie is so... A lot of O's there. Tough. So that got us thinking. We need to take a look back at some of Kyrie's mm. lefty wizardry because this isn't the only one. This is 2015 against the Spurs. He had 57 mm. in this game, Brian. Yeah. One of the best games that he's had as a cat. Yeah, I actually was on the bench. I got front row tickets. Oh, well, what about yeah. this one? 2016. Ooh. This is in Sacramento. Oh, my goodness. What? And then, of course, we're going to go ahead, Perk. This is yeah, 2018. Foul. This is with the Celtics. And this is in Madison Square Garden. Come here. Uh, the, the fact the English, the finger roll, just in traffic, but to get to that shot. And then, of course, it all accumulated uh, in yesterday's shot. Maybe the most difficult shot he, he's ever hit. You know, Perk, you've seen him at practice. I used to watch him at practice. He obviously used to work hard on that left hand. 
but he would do shots in games that I know he didn't practice. And I asked him about that once. And he said, I've been practicing with my left hand my whole life. Mm. I've been preparing for that my whole life. He's also hitting his stride, right? He's played in 18 consecutive games for the first time since 2016. Luca, he's quite possibly playing the best basketball of his career as well. But I keep coming back to, is this duo enough? Is what they are doing at this level enough for the Dallas Mavericks to make a deep and meaningful run? It is. Okay. It is. And, and, and think about 26, 5, and 5. That is what Anthony Edwards is averaging right now. Guess who else is averaging similar numbers? Kyrie Irving, who's the number two option on the team. And it's, it, it, it's a shame because it actually took for Kyrie to have this spectacular shot for us to really wake up and say, you know what? Kyrie Irving has really been balling out because he's been quiet and actually playing the game of basketball. And so when I look at the Western Conference right now, the Clippers are, are going through their trying times right now. Paul We're George get into that. Paul George just said about, you know, they trying to find their identity. Do we really trust the Sacramento Kings right now? They've been up and down. Right. Like, the only team that we actually could trust is the Denver Nuggets. And, and who was that game against? The Denver Nuggets. <laughs> right. So anytime you're trying to reach a goal or trying to find an identity, what's how, like going against the defending champs is no better measure and stick than that. Yeah, so here's, here's if you're building a case for why the Mavericks could do something this postseason, mm -hmm. what you would look at is the way that the trade deadline changed their size. And I heard Nikola Jokic say something after the game last night that really struck me. He said, you know, we, we were smaller than them. How often do you hear Denver say they're smaller than some? Very rarely. And if you looked at the way that the rebounds played out in this game, you never see Denver get out rebounded like this. Also, offensively, Dallas owned the offensive glass, and that's because they bring two seven-footers off the bench. And if you're constructing a way that you're going to slow down the Nuggets, you got to throw multiple big-time big guys at Jokic and Derek Lively, their rookie. Now, I'm not saying this would happen every night, but Derek Lively really held Jokic down defensively. So I'm telling you, size is going to be a big factor in the matchups in the West. Dallas now has the size to give themselves a chance against some of these matchups. You guys make good points. I mean, this team is a very dangerous ball club. You know, you look at their top of the top or you always try to break down playoffs. Usually coaches only play seven guys. So I always try to find like the top seven, eight guys on mm -hmm. each roster. And if yeah. you do that for Dallas, they're a very dangerous team. And th with that being said, my, my concern with them is defense. Absolutely. You know, they, they, they don't play defense. They allow 117 points. The only team in the playoff picture behind them right now is the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, I do like that they've gotten size with Gafford. I think P.J. Washington's an upgrade from Grant Williams just in terms of fit and style of play. Um, but I don't see this team you know, consistently enough play defense to where I can confidently put my confidence behind them in the playoffs, making a run where I see them beating the Clippers in the seven games, let alone the Nuggets, or beating even a Minnesota Timberwolves who plays on both sides of the ball and has but, length and size. But Austin, right now, we really don't see a team in the Western Conference playing cons defense consistently Could, outside of the Nuggets and the Minnesota Timberwolves, to yeah. be honest with you. Sure. And, and great point about Gafford and, and Der Derek Lively. Two athletic bigs yep. who are being mentored by an NBA champion and a veteran and Tyson Chandler. That that goes a long way. For sure, for sure. Right. Yeah. I, I, and also, I mean, I don't want to over it, it. It was a spectacular game winner, but the, the West, it's still absolutely It was a spectacular goes, game. They're still in the plan. Spectacular yeah. game. I'm it, sorry it, to say. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I think they're really the Denver good Denver and Nuggets. exciting. Yeah. I just... March is all about champions. March is also about freshman phenoms. And oh my goodness, Brian, Ooh. does it seem like Victor Wembanyama is hitting his stride? We're going to pick this one up in the in the first quarter here. The Spurs on the break. Wembanyama just comes through the lane slams it down. This was like one of about seven or eight things he did in this game that jaw dropped you. This is just what he does oh every goodness. night. Look at that cross. Oh, look at this reverse. Yeah. What are you going to yeah. do with that? Nothing. That don't even look natural. Nothing. There's nothing you can do. It goes Kyrie's back like, to that well, he every did his left hand. Time. I know, right? Look at that. But he can, and he can block with My his goodness. left hand. Oh. You got to pass it out. Just the discipline also to stay. He was about to try third. I know. Over and over. This was no fair again. because the Nets are so small, it's like playing with kids. Oh I'm my serious. goodness, no, but that's crazy. But I'm serious. That he ability talks at that about size? How he visualizes things before they happen on the floor. That's something he has to have thought he, about doing. He's getting real comfortable right now, this, and that's scary this, for the rest of the league. Yo, this, yo, man. I said there's like seven <laughs> things. We're not even there yet. Left hand. <laughs>
Right. See, there you go. And I saw what Kyrie Irving did earlier. It feels like the, the rookie of the year race, it was tight for a while, and now Victor seems no. to be having his, his final look, look at that. Look. He's just too big. He's too big for them. Look at that. But I love how but, 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 but I love in these highlights we're seeing a mixture of both. His ability to put it on the yes. floor and yes. his ability to play in the paint. Absolutely. And his ability to hit from distance yeah. as well. That shot has become much more consistent for him here. So the last 13 games, he's averaging five assists and five blocks. Did you hear I just said? Mm. Five assists and five blocks. That's crazy. Into overtime we go. More of the Victor Wembanyama show. <laughs> yeah. I love that though. He's, he's getting to the basket, man. He's living through the paint and then letting the jump shot come later. But of course, because it's Victor, he has to seal it on the defensive end. Oh, Victor watching, hunting, pins oh. it against the backboard. Oh, the ball. Are we the sure Spurs he can't win defensive player of the year? 122, 115. Well, he did have 33 points, 15 rebounds, seven assists, and seven God blocks him, in this one. He became the second rookie France, with 30 points, 15 <laughs> rebounds, five assists, five blocks in a game since blocks became official in 73 74. He actually joined fellow Spurs number one overall pick, David Robinson, nice. who did that back in, in 1990. So, I'm gonna try to wrap up the ball, but I'm gonna try to wrap up the ball, but I'm gonna try to wrap up the ball, but I'm gonna try to wrap up the ball, but I'm gonna try to wrap up the ball, but I'm gonna try to wrap up the ball